Thank you, guys. We look forward to good news from you guys when you get back. All right, uh, where's Jocelyn at? Jocelyn, my scripture reader. This young lady is part of the leadership team of our youth group, as well as handles the Instagram deal for our youth. And I think you crochet some, right? That's probably a lost art there. Uh, but it's very, uh, very vital to our church family in a lot of ways. And so thank you for being willing to share the word today, okay? Do you want me to put it? Hebrews 12, 14, 15. Make every effort to live in peace with all men, and to be holy is without holiness. No one will see the Lord. See to it that no one misses the grace of God, and that no bitter root grows up, that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Thank you so very, very much. Well, I was outside early this morning. It was a lot nicer than it has been. Did anybody notice that difference in change? Uh, by the way, I know, I know one family of our live stream folks are from Canada that are here. And uh, uh, this is actually a cool front that's come through, <laughs> in case you didn't recognize it. Uh, but uh, I always love it when we have some of our live stream church family come from uh, different places around the country to, to be with us. And so, because uh, uh, we welcome them online, we feel like we kind of know people, you know, you, we see their names all the time and, and kind of things as we host and, and communicate with folks all over the country. And it's just great physically to have people here visiting with us today. So, well, let's turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and do a little work this morning, okay? Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a... Uh, the very first uh, uh, section of this is going to, well, let's just read a couple of verses here. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author, perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful man, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. We don't want to lose heart. And the writer is trying to get them not to lose heart through all the difficult times. He's just given them this whole chapter 11 of all these encouraging people who had faith to accomplish so much for the kingdom because they trusted God. And, and Nathan did a, a great job, by the way, last week. And uh, 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 David, uh, I'd be sure and tell him, I said that out loud and on purpose, okay? Uh, I'm sure the family will get the message there. But he did a great job uh, uh, with the last half of 11. And uh, appreciate it so very, very much, uh, that young man's study. And so as we, as we dive into this, he talks about a race. Well, it just so happens, I've been watching a lot of races lately on the Olympics. Anybody watching any of the Olympics? Now, I know some of you, you know, I'm not watching that, you know, because of something happened here or there or whatever. What, whatever you feel right, okay. But I've been watching the track and field. That's mainly what I watch. And uh, man, there's been some close races. There's been some heartbreak. There's been some fall down, uh, trip over the hurdles, and, and that I can relate to a little bit more. Uh, I know you don't think that I actually ever ran much, but uh, I, 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 I want you to know there was a time when I matched the fastest guy in our high school in the 100-yard dash. I mean, and his name was Ron. Matter of fact, Ron sometimes gets online. I hope he's listening today. Well, maybe not because he might tell the story different. But uh, <laughs> one time, I'll tell you the time I matched his speed. Now, this was pre-Christian days. We both grew up going to church, but we hadn't really yet found the Lord, you know what I'm saying? We hadn't made the turnover there of our hearts. And we're in high school. I think it was high school, or junior high maybe. And we ran around with another guy named Red Dog. Now, his name's Gary, but we, everybody called him Red Dog. Great athlete. We were out late one night, and my little town in Pocahontas, Arkansas, there wasn't really a lot to do. 
once 10 o'clock came, everything kind of shut down. You know what I'm saying? You grew up, grew up in a town like that. You know, a town that has one light and it's a blinking red light and it runs through the car wash. You know, what I'm, I mean, not quite that bad, but you know. So we wanted to get out that night. So we snuck out and we were going to get these girls to sneak out with us. Don't get any ideas. <laughs> Sorry, Spencer. I'm, I'm trying. So the girls we wanted lived in a two-story house. So we get over there and there's a little hangover, a little roof and a gutter, and then there's their window. We can't quite really get close enough, and so I've got a, a couple of pebbles of rocks. I'm going to try to throw up there and hit the window and see if they'll come out, you know. And so uh, don't look at me like you hadn't done that kind of stuff. I, <laughs> so I get on, Red Dog's the tallest one. I get on his shoulders and I'm balancing myself, just hanging on, barely just touching the edge of the gutter. And I'm trying to throw a rock up there and, uh, and, and all of a sudden a light comes on downstairs and it startles him. Startles a red and so he turns to look at it and when he does, I, I lose balance. I grab the gutter and there's water in it, rain, and it all went down on his head. He ran out from under me. I slam against the house. I dropped to the ground and we started running and I promise you, I was step by step right beside Ronald Simpson and the 100 yard dash. I could have run a tra I could have won the track meet that night. You know, motivation makes a lot of difference. You know what I'm saying? Well, what he's saying here is you've got a race to run. And the motivation makes all the difference. And the first thing he says is you've got this cloud of witnesses uh, encompassed, encompassed about, surrounded you. Now, most, a lot of people like to think of this as this cloud of witnesses that are spectators looking down and cheering you on as you run. I, I don't really think, that that's what you think it is, that's okay, but I don't really think that's what he's talking about because I, I don't think anybody actually that's physically up in heaven cares to look down and see what's going on on earth. You know, I mean, it's a lot better place. They're not thinking about us. I'm, that's, this is just my take on the verse. It's, there's three looks that take place here. First, there's the upward, uh, there's the outward look about those that are around. It's not that they look at me running the race. It's that I have looked at them. I'm the spectator. I've seen them and I've seen their faith and I've seen what they've done and, and the victories and the hard times they've gone through and they were still right there because there was something greater that lay ahead for them and that's the crew I want to be with and I'm right there with them and I, I'm encouraged and I'm motivated by all those heroes of faith that he's just written about. So I look outward to this great cloud of witnesses. Then I look inward and I say, what's weighing me down? As he said, put aside that whatever that is that's been a burden to you that's weighing you down. And the sin that so easily entangles you. That word entangles the word for constrict, constricts you. Hold you back. Just get you all tied up. Says so you got to lay aside that kind of stuff. You got to put that out. So you got to look inside ourselves. We have to say, I have to say, okay, Mike, what's, what is it that's weighing me down that's keeping me from really running the race the way I need to? Is it some of my old sins I'm hanging on to when, when God's already forgiven them? So many of us let Satan attack us with our past when God's already forgiven it. Don't be burdened by what's already been forgiven. Let the shame go. Let the guilt go. Don't let Satan talk you into pulling that back up and reliving it any way, shape, form, or fashion. Set aside that. It'll, it'll, it'll kill you. After all, that's what he desires to do, right? Steal, kill, and destroy. He'll steal your joy. Kill your spirit. He'll destroy your soul. No, we don't want, we don't want that. We've got to lay aside things, things that are, are, are heavy to us. We've got, we got to put them all to the side. We want to be lean and mean when we run this race, right? 
So we don't want to be weighed down by anything. And, and that sin that so easily entangles us. And boy, isn't that the way sin is? Just like when you're least expected, there's, there's one in your life that just keeps so easily keeps coming back in. And it just gets you wrapped up and you're like, oh man, I thought I had some, uh, some success there and all of a sudden now I'm attacked again. And how many times have I said or you've said, no, nah, this is the last, that's the last time I'm ever doing that. Right? Then it wasn't the last. Because we battle this old flesh. Remember what he said in First John? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life, sex, money, and power. Those things attack us when, from the fleshly side of things and boy, they burden us and they hold us back. When we run the race, we get easily entangled in some of those things. So don't do it. You got to lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily entangles you and you run with perseverance, with determination, with patience. So you look outward at the great witnesses. You look inward at what weighs us down and then he says, you look upward. Focus on Jesus. Look at what he went through for us. He's the one that perfects our faith. He's the one that grows us up. It's a process, right? It's not about perfection. It's about direction. Walking with the Lord is about the tenor of our life. Remember what he says in 1 John chapter 1? As we uh, walk in the light as he is in the light. The blood of Jesus Christ continually cleanses us from our, all of our sin. Continually cleanses us from our sin. So guess what I have when I'm in the light? Sin. But it's being continually cleansed as my direction and the tenor of my life is serving God. Now I'm not going to do everything just right, but I can still run the race in a great and mighty way giving God glory. Because of what Jesus has done, is doing, and will do for me. Jesus. Amen, Kurt. Jesus. That's exactly right. That's what it's all about. Don't lose heart. Run the race with proper vision. Look outward, look inward, and look upward. Look at verse 5 through 11. And you have forgotten the word of encouragement that addresses you as sons. And he gets a quote here from the Old Testament. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons for what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who've disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of our spirit and life? Our fathers disciplined us for a little while, as though they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Don't lose heart. Endure discipline. What does discipline show? Discipline shows that the Father loves us. So when I go through a hard time and, and I'm, I'm having some kind of difficulty, I need to view that as discipline and that's coming because God loves me. He wants what's best for me and he's growing me up. So instead of praying, get rid of all this, God help me go through it the way you want me to and to grow the way you want me to. Because we're all going to have this kind of chastisement and discipline in our life not only shows the father's love it helps us share in his holiness did you get that verse it says we share in his holiness then it also says it produces righteousness and peace 
You know, I look out people I deal with every day and folks that I meet in the community and there's drama in their lives and marriage is all messed up or their kids are rebellious and there's just all kinds of things going on. You know what they all would like? Peace. They would like peace. But everything they do almost by automatic when you're out in the world, everything you do destroys peace. It doesn't build it. Holiness and peace, he says. So discipline that comes from God has great value to us as it grows us up to have the character of Christ. And we can learn to have holiness, not because we do everything that's holy, but because of the blood of Christ, we can be counted holy. We practice holiness. And we can have peace. I can lay my head down on my pillow tonight and know without a doubt, no matter what happens, if Jesus comes, I'm, re- I'm going to heaven. I'm with him. That kind of assurance and confidence only can come from understanding God's holiness and a peace that comes through God's spirit in our lives. Amen. It's the only way. And boy, doesn't our world need peace? Just turn on the TV. Well, really, don't turn it on, but let me tell you, if you've had yours on, have you seen some chaos? Chaos in our country? Chaos in the world? And people don't know how to get to peace? I'm telling you, peace is not going to come into my personal life or yours. Peace will not come by the people I vote for. That's not going to solve your problems. I got news for you. Peace is not going to come with the absence of hostility in the world because as Christians, it's all Christianity always runs counterculture to what's going on around us. And if we try to make it run smooth with it, we're going to be in trouble. But even at that conflict in the war that we fight against the flesh, we still have this thing called peace. Don't lose heart. Run the race with vision. Don't lose heart. Endure discipline. Don't lose heart. Pursue the eternal. Look here in verse 12. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for, you, uh, for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it. We ought to get this verse down. You want to memorize one out of this text, memorize this one. See to it. That no one misses the grace of God. And that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. See that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau. Who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the uh, oldest son. Afterward, as you know, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. He could bring about no change of mind, though he sought the blessing with tears (laughs) don't lose heart first thing he says in the first couple of verses pursue strength strengthen those weak hands and those strengthen that pursue that and he says pursue peace and then he says pursue holiness and this last one pursue grace He says, see to it that no one misses the grace of God. And if they do miss it, you know what the result is? 
Well, the verse tells you, right? A bitter root grows up. I, uh, I appreciate every Bible class teacher I ever had as a kid. That they made me memorize scripture. That they put some stuff inside me. And I'm grateful my, for my heritage. I'm grateful for my heritage within the restoration movement that says let's just go back to the Bible and believe it. And that's what I'm trying to do. But I was also raised in a very legalistic situation. Because we hollered truth and we whispered grace. And we made everything that we thought was right or wrong got equal weight. Even though the Bible says there are weightier matters of the law. Even though the Bible says the gospel is of first importance, that means there are other things that are not first. How we worship is not first importance. The gospel, the story of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus is first. Amen. We got to keep first things first. Because when we bring other stuff that doesn't carry the same weight and make them first, then we become a legalistic group. And then what happens with that when you miss the grace of God? You become bitter people always arguing over who's right, who's wrong, who's in, and who's out. God forgive us for the judgmental attitude, at least that I had as a kid growing up and learning Bible. And I'll tell you, it was so crazy in my mind. This is what legalism does to you. So crazy. I can remember sitting on the back of a pickup truck out at, out at Current River, drinking a beer, arguing Bible with the guy next to me, telling him why he's out and why I'm in. Because it was more important about what you believed than how you lived. Anybody relate to that? It was a great day. When I finally understood that grace not only covered my bad behavior, but it covers my bad theology. Amen. Because I don't know everything in this book. And I'm going to have some things that aren't on target. Now, the main things are the plain things. I got that. The gospel being first importance, Jesus, the incarnation, crucifixion, resurrection, ascension, second coming. I got that. The Holy Spirit living inside. I got that. But there's a whole lot in here I'm still growing and learning. And I'm not in and out every time I find something new that I had wrong. In the Bible. I used to think that's the way it was when you walked in the light. I used to think that walking in the light was like walking a tightrope. And I'm like doing like this right here. And then I stump my toe and said a bad word and I'm out of the light. And I got to pray real quick and for forgiveness and I'm back in the light. And I'm in and out of the light. And I just hope he comes when I happen to be in. Matter of fact, if I could just die with a communion cup in one hand, bread in the other, and, doop, doop, and then be gone, I'd make it. There I'd be okay. Or better yet, just drown me in the baptistry. Right? You know what's so sad is that a time when we had, should have great assurance when we've just obeyed the gospel. That should be the, the point of which we start growing in more confidence. Sometimes that was the greatest confidence for people's lives was back when they were a brand new Christian. Because Satan loves to attack your mind. If he can't get you with immorality and he can't get you uh, uh, with other sins, then he's going to try to get you with your own religious thinking. And he'll steal your joy. And I'm tired of letting Satan steal the joy Amen. from me or my brothers and sisters. It's time we take it back. And we can only do that by us making sure no one misses the grace of God. See to it. Make it something that you're going to look out and make an effort towards. See to it that no one misses the grace of God. And that no bitter root grows up among you.
That's why they call it amazing, isn't it? I need it. You know, I get distracted sometimes. Probably like you do. Running this race. My eyes don't stay where they need to be. I go through a little tough time. It's easy to get off track. And if I'm not careful, I end up like old Esau here in the last two verses. Where he wanted some instantly for his pleasure. And it cost him. You see, he went for short-term relief and found long-term misery. Let me say it this way. Because we all get tempted by the temporary. You listening? Don't give up what you want most for what you want now. Don't give up what you want most for what you want now. Run the race. Focus on Jesus. He'll take care of you. Don't lose heart. God's just going to grow you through that tough times. Don't lose heart. As you make efforts to be holy, God will continue to grow you up. Don't lose heart. Peace is yours. You belong to Jesus. And he is more than able to walk with you through whatever comes your way in this old world because there's a better life beyond this one, right? I went to three funerals in two days this weekend. But I'm telling you, the overriding thing was they're better off than they were when they were here. And you and I will be better off there than we are here. But while we're here, until we get there, we want to we wanna see to it that no one misses the grace of God. And what a great, great plan God has for us. Oh, I want to be great when we get to heaven. You don't have words like hospital. You don't have words like cancer. You don't have words like debt. You don't have brokenness. You won't have mourning. You won't have tears. Our whole vocabulary will change. But what we will have is we will have family. We will have love. We will have togetherness. We will have light and life. We'll have joy never ending. Who would want to miss out on that? See, the story of the death, burial, and resurrection is about giving people hope. I love the word hope. It's light at the end of the tunnel. So when, when that good news of Jesus pricks your heart and you want to do the right thing, repent, say, I want to change my life. Be baptized into Christ. Like we see people done here almost every Sunday. Put to death that old man. Be raised up reenacting the death, burial, and resurrection to walk and live for God. If you've not done that, today's the day. Don't walk out of here without having the hope of heaven because of the good news of Jesus. I, I, I'm just encouraged to be baptized into Christ if you have not done that. If you've done that and Satan's got you off track on your race, that's why we're family. That's why we share and pray together and help each other because, look, hey, I promise you, ain't nobody in here more broken than me. And I've always told you there's a big gap between what I read and how I live because I'm still trying to, I mean, this is the ideal. I want to live like this, but I'm, I don't know about you, but I, it's a battle sometimes. But we, we can battle it together. That's what I love about our forever family. We get behind each other. We battle things together. If you have a need today to respond to Christ in any way, would you do so while we stand and we're going to sing this song?